So here's what I'm going to do, which is a little bit unusual and just comes out of the fact that I realize I never used the reference sheet as well as it could have been. I want you to write with me everything that's under that little heading. There's not that much because we actually know pretty much all of it now. The purpose of us writing it will be to talk through what it means and also so you know what's there and what's not there. Okay, so let me get rid of this, um, <laughs> this function that we don't want to differentiate. And we're just going to go step by step writing everything that's there because basically I'm assuming after two weeks your brain is somewhat turned to mush. So let's unmushify it, that's the technical term, and get you back on the horse. It will help if you have two colors. In one color, that's a bad choice, in one color we'll actually write the stuff that's on the reference sheet and in another color we will annotate and we'll talk about what's going on. Okay? So this is the very first thing that you see at the top of that section. And immediately, it should signal to you some things are going on. Okay? For starters, here's my first annotation. What kind of object is this? This is a parabola, very good. Okay? So the first thing I'm going to say is, I know what this object is. But it's a parabola stated in a very particular form. What form would we call this? What was the, um, what was the topic before we introduced this idea of the parameter? Yeah, it was the locus, right? So this is the parabola in locus form. We know that from straight lines we can take the same object, like a straight line, and provide it in lots of different forms based on what we want to know about the form. You could go slope gradient, or two point, or whatever you wanted. Okay? In this form, for a parabola, what do we see? For example, what's that guy? This is the focal length. right? Now the focal length doesn't mean anything until you remember, well, when you talk about locus, when you talk about locus, you mean you're describing some kind of curve, some kind of function, or not function, like a circle, uh, in terms of particular geometric features. What are the geometric features that define what the focal length is? You could say this a couple of different ways. Any suggestions? The equal distance between a point and like another point in a line. Okay, so I'm going to carry on Russell's definition and I need some help to refine this a little bit. He talked about a distance between, and which is quite clearly, I mean, it's a length, right? So it's a distance between two things. He talked about a point and a line, but there's specific points and specific lines that we're talking about here, right? Can someone help us provide some more information here? Yeah, read me. Okay, between the focus and what? Now think for a moment, think back. <laughs> okay, so when you think, and maybe it might help you, again, in your annotating color to draw a little diagram over here, when you think about our regular parabola, like so, okay, the focus, I guess we'd place that somewhere up here. If that's where the focus is, and I'm going to label it with the characteristically unhelpful letter S, if that's where the focus is, where's the focal length on this diagram? Yeah, it's, it's, I'm going to need my original color now. It's, um, it's this distance, isn't it? That's the focal length A. So it's the distance between the focus and the what? And the vertex. Right? Um, I could say the parabola. It is the shortest distance, but it's more helpful for me. It's more descriptive to say the particular place where that happens has a name anyway. So I'm going to call it that. And the vertex. Um, it's the distance between the focus and the vertex, which is also the shortest distance between, and there's this other feature you were telling me about, right? What was the other feature? The directrix. It's the shortest distance, or I could have said the perpendicular distance, between the directrix and the vertex. Same length, you can measure it from two spots, and I guess I'll put that other spot in now. There's A. The second version, right? And you can see where the directrix would be. Happy times, okay? Right, so far so good, yep. Say that again. Uh, so S is just the name of the coordinate. A is the actual length, yeah? So um, if that length were A, then I can say the coordinates of S would be, well, it's on the y-axis, right? So what will the x coordinate be? Zero. And it's A units upwards, so that would be 0, comma A. 
right? Okay, so far so good. We haven't even gotten off the first line, I should point out. We haven't said anything about this. But there's one more thing I want to state, which is that this is the parabola in locus form, but it has to look like this. It has to pass through the origin. How do I know that? It has to pass through the origin. How do I know? Yeah. Ah, okay, so this is like the, the standard locus form, the simplest locus form you could find, right? Um, another way of saying this is if it's x equals 0, then, then this whole left-hand side is 0. So y clearly also has to be 0, you're passing through the origin. So this is the parabola in locus form, but it can be translated as well. How would I translate it if I wanted to? What would I write differently about this equation? Yeah, sure. Uh, Okay, so yeah, you got the right idea. So this is the same. This is the same thing. It's still in the parabola. It's still in locus form, but I've just moved it somewhere else. Now, please note, I said to you before, one of the things you've got to know about the reference sheet is what's on it, but also what's not on it. Okay, why do we not provide this to you? Because you should be able to work that out from the original thing. You know how to move things around here and there. Same idea, just put in another place. H comma k. Uh, what is the significance of h comma k? to this parabola. It's the, it's the vertex, isn't it? Okay, that's why I was highlighting the origin before. Okay, thank goodness. That was a lot of annotation for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine characters. So let's keep going. The next thing it says is this, x equals two a t, y equals a t squared. Hmm. What's this? This has a name, this pair of objects. What are these things called? Yeah, these are the parametric equations, right? Which immediately tells you, once you describe these things as the parametric equations, that actually tells you we missed something from the earlier thing. What is this thing? If these are the parametric equations, what's this thing called? It's the Cartesian equation. There's no parameter, there's no t in sight in the original equation. So this guy is the Cartesian equation, singular. I hope this is serving to ring some bells in your head. <laughs> this, is, this is the intent of um, doing this, okay? So these parametric equations, what they tell you is that the parameter t is this third variable. This third variable is on the side, that's lit literally what parameter means. It's this on the side measurement. And it defines x and y. If you know what t is, you can find out what x and y are independently. Okay? In the context of the parabola, what is the parameter? What does it actually mean? Because on the unit circle, we know what that parameter theta means. It's the angle at the center. Um, what does this parameter mean in the context of the parabola? It's the gradient at that point. Okay. 